Hello and welcome to today's show. Today I will present this small crosscut sled that I just finalized. It has this built-in flip feature that allows me to make both straight and 45 degree bevel cuts. I will start by showing the main features of this sled and then I will show you how I built it. This is not the first flip sled in the world and I've also seen other variants where we move the sled to the other mitre channel to make the 45 degree bevel cuts. Compared to moving it to the other channel I prefer to flip the sled instead. The main reason for that is that the mitre channels they can differ slightly in width and if you make it zero free play in one of the channels and then move the sled to the other channel it might get stuck or you might have excessive free play. This sled is mainly intended for smaller parts like grower parts and so on and the base is about 60 by 30 centimeters and that's quite small for a crosscut sled and it makes it easy to operate. The base is made out of 60 mm Alcomot, that's a fruit colored slightly more dense MDF and it has these routed in tracks for the micro jig dovetail clamps. You can see this as a one sided sled, it only travels in one of the mitre slots and I'm operating the sled from this side. Even if I'm not using this side of the sled as a work surface, it has two important functions. Number one, it supports the off cuts and gives terror free cuts. And number two is that when I flip the sled around, this surface here ends up here and becomes a work surface. The fences are made out of 2 by 15 mm Baltic birch glued together. And on the top side I have this routed in T-track on the side of the fence that I'm using. And there I have a very simple but very stable stock that I can set to any position. Just as my full size sled I stop the travel in the outfit table. I think this is the safest way to prevent the sled from traveling too far. So I added a threaded knob here and the mitre bar stops against this one. Then on the back side of both fences I have these blade covers so the blade will never be exposed on the back side of the sled. I start by cutting my material to size. Then I make a rough placement of the runner, the saw blade tracks as well as the dovetail tracks for the clamps. Then I route the shallow pass for the mitre runner. I use a 15mm router bit and make the first pass. I measure how much I'm off. Then I adjust my fence accordingly and make a second pass. This gives me a really good press fit. With the mitre runner press fitted in place, I can now lay out the saw blade position for both the 0 and the 45 degree setting. I then remove my sketch rough layout and instead make the real layout for the dovetail tracks as well as the fence position. I also lay out the drop down zone for the clamps. I then bring out my dado jig that looks something like this and it registers against the center mark. I clamp that onto my workpiece, install a guide bushing and the 12mm router bit on my router. Then I set my stops both front and back and go ahead and route the 12mm as I call them drop down zone for the clamps. I switch to 6mm router bit and I reset the stops on my dado jig and then I route the relief cuts. They will make life easier for the dovetail cutter in the final step. Final pass is with a dovetail cutter and I use the same stop positions as before. Some light sandings later and the dovetail tracks are finalized. These center punchers are used for laying out the holes for the mitre runner. I drill these holes and then I countersink them for M6 screws. I then lay out the center for the fence positions. Here I would use machine screws together with cross dowels. I begin by drilling the large hole for the machine screw head and then I make an oversized through hole. For the fences I rip two pieces of 15mm Baltic birch and I glue these together. In the glue up I make sure to have one part protruding outside the other. After the glue up I check for straightness. Then I run my protruding part against the fence to get the other side even and then I use that side to rip my parts. I also cut the fence parts to length. 
I lay out the position for the T-tracks and then I route the grooves for them in several height passes on the router table. After the router table I clean up the corners with a chisel. To lay out the holes in my fences I use a square against the base plate and I clamp my fence in place and then I use the center punchers to transfer the holes. I then drill the screw holes as well as the cross towel holes. I also drill a hole for a threaded insert. This insert is the parking spot for the threaded knob that I showed in the intro. It's used for stopping the sled's forward motion. I rub the small dust chamfer on the front side of both fences and that makes them complete for now. For the blade guard I'm using a piece of solid wood but you could use just about anything. I mill up my piece of wood so it's square and nice and I plane it to final dimensions. I cut one end at 45 degrees and the other at 90 degrees and I lay out these landing grooves as I call them. These grooves are cut using the mitre gauge. With the grooves cut I then cross cut my blade guards to length. I use the saw blade positions to lay out the positions for the blade guards. Then I drill and countersink from the inside of the fences for the blade guard screws. I use the center punchers to transfer the holes from the fence to the blade guards and I pre-drill for the screws. A bit of shaping of the blade guards to remove sharp edges and make them look a bit more nice. I remove the pen marks and sand my parts to remove sharp edges and it's time to assemble this sled. I begin by attaching the mitre runner. On the back side of the sled I attach four strips of this low friction tape. I then tune the expansion discs on the mitre runner to get a zero free play movement. I install the T-tracks and then the cross dowels and then it's time to mount the fences and I use one screw in each corner to start with and I drew up the fence against the base plate. After that I install the remaining screws. It's time to make the first cut and here I use a support piece on both exit sides to avoid tear out. With that cut done I can now use my blade guards to set the stop position for the sled. And here I install a threaded knob into a threaded insert. I then install the blade guards and here you can see the landing groove that I mentioned before. It's time to make the first wheel cut and check for squareness and I also make the first cut in the 45 degree setting. For the top part of the stop I use a scrap piece and I route two grooves and here the inner groove is on the safe side leaving me some margin. I then go ahead and measure the inner dimension of the T-track as well as my remaining part. Then I adjust my fence accordingly and make a second pass for the inner groove. This gives me a perfect fit onto the inner portion of the T-track. I drill a hole for the locking knob and then I cut my stop part to final dimensions. The vertical part of my stop is a piece of plywood and I lay out the length of that and then I cut it slightly short. Then I drill two holes for flat sunk screws. Again I use the center puncher to lay out the position in the other part and I pre-drill for the screws. Using a square as a reference I attach the vertical part to the top part. Some light sanding and then this stop is finalized. It slides real easy without any free play and is super stable sideways. With the stop finalized this sled is now complete and it works very well and I think it will become my favorite sled. I will finish this up with a few reflections.
When I mounted my fences, I squared them up against the base side that was used for routing the shallow groove for the mitre runner. This should give a decent squareness, but it might be that you have to fine tune this. If you need to adjust the fence angle after you cut through your sled, I recommend that you clamp a longer piece of wood reaching over the entire base plate, which is now divided into three separate plates. This piece that you clamp down, it makes sure that these three separate base plate pieces they stay in position while you adjust only the fence angle. There are a few occasions when you maybe want to stop on the other side of the blade and there I have no T-track. The first I can think of is if you're cutting tenon shoulders, but for those cuts I like to have a stop where I have a small notch in it that gives the off-cut free space to move, so there my ordinary stop wouldn't work very well anyway. So then I just put this temporary stop with a clamp onto my main fence. But feel free to run the T-track the entire length of the fences. For the screws from the underside of the base plate holding the fences in place, I use machine screws together with cross dowels, but that's mainly me having a fetish for machine threaded screws. You could just as well use normal wood screws with washers in oversized holes. That's it for today and I hope that you enjoyed watching this. Thank you very much.